Hello and welcome back to this series of tutorials presented by Neometrics Technologies. In these tutorials, we will continue to explore and practice some of the design capabilities of Geomagic Design X. In this second exercise, we will be solid, solid modeling a valve connector, and the objectives are going to be to align scan data um, to, into a useful global coordinate system. We're also going to generate a symmetrical sketch and generate a primitive solid, solid um, bodies from regions. So let's begin by importing our um, mesh STL file. Coming up to the import at the top, valve connector, import. Okay, and as you can see, um, the part isn't really aligned into the global coordinate system that we currently have. So we're gonna go ahead and um, align that. Um, but first we are um, going to um, go over to the regions tab and separate um, this mesh into regions based on the curvature. So we'll go ahead and auto segment it. We're going to set the sensitivity to be 60 and it's going to be a third smooth. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And uh, like I said before, it normally takes about 30 seconds or so um, to go through the process of um, creating the different regions um, and segments um, for use later on. Okay, so now that we have our regions, um, just as before, um, we're actually going to make our base plane the bottom of this valve connector. So we just want to go ahead and take a look and make sure that there aren't any uh, majorly segmented regions. Um, it looks like we have a pretty solid, solid region down there at the bottom, so we can continue. Coming up to the model tab, we'll go back and um, add a plane, um, just like we did before. Uh, just go ahead and select that region on the bottom of the, the flange and click accept as well. Now we're also going to create um, vectors um, that are going to be uh, the, the center axis of both of these cylinders. And from there, we're going to connect them um, by a point, and that's how we're going to continue aligning. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, from the add vector, we're going to um, select that. And then for the method, we're going to choose find cylinder axis, axis. And we're going to just go ahead and select this outer area, and it's going to show you where it's creating that vector before we do complete it. So let's go ahead and click OK and do the same thing for the other cylinder as well. So go back, find cylinder axis, and click that as well. Clicking OK. So now that we have those two, um, we'll go ahead and create a reference point, cylinder reference geometry section. Um, the method that we're going to use for this is intersecting two lines. So we'll go ahead and vector two is already selected. So we're just going to go ahead and click vector one as well. Click OK. So now we have our reference point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off vector one. That was just to create the reference point. We don't actually need it for the alignment. So now we have a point, we have a line, and we have a plane. We'll turn those planes back on now. So now we can go ahead and get the alignment started. So going up to the alignment tab, um, we're going to choose interactive alignment. And just go ahead and make sure that the pre-align with global origin is checked. And the moving entities is going to be our valve connector mesh over here. So that's selected. Let's go to the next stage. OK, so we're going to do the 3, 2, 1 moving method. Um, the plane is going to be that plane that we did create. Um, so go ahead and choose plane 1 for that. The vector is going to be vector 2. And then the position is going to be that reference point that we created from the intersecting um, axes. Um, so let's go ahead and click accept and take a look at what that, that looks like. We'll go ahead and turn off this plane and those as well. So taking a look, it looks pretty, pretty aligned. And alignment is very important when you're designing, especially if you're trying to work with a part that is symmetrical and only modeling one half of it and being able to mirror that onto the other side. So alignment is a very important step before you begin any modeling. Um, so it looks good. Let's go ahead and delete the things that we, the, um, the reference geometries that we just made since we do no longer need them, just to kind of clear up some space over in our tree. So selecting them and clicking delete. Okay. So the next step is going to be begin sketching. We're going to begin sketching on the bottom flange on that on the um, base plane. It's going to be our front plane in this in this scenario. So let's go up to the sketch tab, and we're going to 
from the drop down menu, hit um, mesh sketch, and we're going to choose our front plane. Now we're going to do an offset of three millimeters. And we just want to go ahead and make sure that that is moving into the mesh and not away from it. It is moving in, so we can go ahead and click accept. And let's go ahead and hide the mesh. Um, again, this is control one to hide the mesh. Um, so for this, there is a rounded off edge over here, but what we're trying to do in this tutorial is just to create a very symmetrical sketch. So we're going to do one quarter of this um, polyline and then mirror it um, twice over. So let's start with our center lines that we're going to use for mirroring. So I'll create one here. And I will create one down here. Perfect. Okay. So now that we have those, let's go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. And again, these uh, little green green squares represent our constraints. So that's giving it a vertical constraint, and this is giving it a perpendicular perpendicular constraint to that line. Um, just just for future. Um, so what we're going to do is just put a um, a line over here on this polyline, and then we're also going to make an arc right here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and start mirroring it. So starting first, we're going to drop down and select line in the draw section. And I'm just going to double click on that line. And since I think that's pretty much vertical, I'm going to select it and hit vertical to give it a little bit more of a um, constraint to it. Um, and then we're going to use a three-point arc um, to make this arc right over here. So I'll choose this. Oh, let's try that again. Okay, so I'll start from here, select this side, and then we're going to select this center, which is right there. Okay, so now that we have that, go ahead and click OK. So zooming in a little bit, uh, we have our line, and we have our arc. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mirror this arc across this um, symmetry line, and then that way I can create a um, fillet up at the top here and I'm also going to create a fillet over here and then we'll go ahead and trim so let's do that really quickly so coming up to the pattern section we're going to choose mirror uh, the symmetry line is going to be this vertical line that I have right here the entities that I'm mirroring are going to be that arc and that's just to create a, again the fillet um, to make the step a little bit quicker so making sure that specify value and add dimension are not selected I'm going to go ahead and select this one and the other arc and clicking OK. Now I can drag and adjust that to accurately fit the polyline. And I can do one more fillet actually over here. So selecting that first arc and the line and it creates a fillet. And it looks like it's pretty close already, so we'll go ahead and leave that one alone. Um, and then next we're just going to trim up um, some of the stuff off to the side over here and down at the bottom. So we'll choose trim in the tool section. We're going to do power, power trim, not corner trim. Uh, I'll show you that a little bit later. So let's just go ahead and trim this section and that, and then this as well, because we're just going to mirror all that anyways. Okay, so now that we have that, we'll choose mirror, and I'll just zoom out so you can see this a little bit better. And uh, our symmetry line um, to start off with will be the, the horizontal. It's, it doesn't really matter which one you choose to be first. And we're going to mirror all these entities. I'm just going to simply um, box select our, from our selection tools. Box select is normally the default. Um, so I'll just go ahead and box select all those. And it's going to choose all those for me. And it looks pretty good. It's lining up pretty well. So we can go ahead and, and click OK. And then we're going to do it one more time. Um, we're going to use this as our symmetry line. And we're just going to go ahead and box select all of these entities as well. Now, for this particular model, there is a curve there. Um, we could adjust that, but just for the sake of this, we are just doing a mirror um, just to show you how to use that tool properly. Okay, so go ahead and click Exit. So now that we have that, we are able to go ahead and extrude that sketch. So let's go over to the Model tab and click Extrude. Um, the base sketch is going to be the one that we just created. You can There's two ways of selecting that. You can either click on the sketch itself or come over to the tree um, and open that up and just choose that. So for this, um, for this extrude, the method that we're going to be using as far as direction is going to be um, up to region. 
um, so it can come up to this top region on the top of the flange right there. And we're going to do um, a max distance position on it as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that top region, and it's going to automatically just bring it up to where we need it to be. And I'll click Accept. So, so far so good. I'm going to just go ahead and hide that solid body for right now while we continue to work on this. Um, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to be using our um, solid primitive um, to create these three um, cylindrical items. Um, and then let's get started with that. So for regions, and it's automatically going to say extract specific shape. You can change it if you need to. Um, that's going to be what we're working with. I'm going to go ahead and select this first region and the second on the side um, as well. And it's going to create a cylindrical shape. Um, we want the extend ratio to be 20%, so it's going to go a little bit above where we need it to be, and we can just change that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and click OK and take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so there we have our first cylinder. Go ahead and open this up. I'm going to turn those two off for right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and do those other two really quickly as well. So again, it automatically chooses it. Okay, clicking OK. Awesome. And just one more. And OK. OK, so now we have all of our cylinders that we need. Um, now, as you can see, they do go a little bit past where our um, actual flange cylinder um, side <laughs> valve um, stops. So there's a, a few ways that you can kind of take a look at this to see where, where it's at. So that's where our cylinder stops, and that's where we need it to stop. So what we can do now is go ahead and use a tool called Move Face. Um, it's going to be over here in the body face section. So click on move face. We're actually going to um, select um, on this face right here, and the direction is going to be, we're gonna, just going to select the same face so that we can just go ahead and adjust it. And I'll come in here, and we can take a look at what that, that looks like. Let's go ahead and turn that back to wireframe. There we go. Wireframe is good for this um, kind of technique, so you can see exactly where you're working. Okay, that looks like it's pretty good. So I'll go ahead and click Accept for that. Okay, let's do the same thing with this other side. And the direction is going to be the same. Okay, and let's go ahead and bring that back down. Okay, looks good. So let's go ahead and click Accept again. Okay, turning back on. So we have this so far for our model. See this cylinder, um, the first cylinder that we made is actually needs to be cut at a, um, at a diagonal. Um, so we're going to actually create a plane to make that cut. So just go ahead and click Plane, select the region on that, on that surface and click accept. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and actually hide this cylinder, this flange, and leave those two up since we're going to be cutting those two. Um, oh, this one, sorry. Okay, so we'll do the first cut. Um, the tool entity is going to do that plane that we just we just made. If it's not already selected, um, you can always just go ahead and select it, and the target body will be um, the first cylinder that we made. Going on to the next stage, we'll keep the bottom portion, go ahead and click accept, and then we're going to do the same thing um, for this cylinder as well. So cut, um, plane entity, tool entity is um, the plane four, target body is going to be the cylinder um, three that we made, and go ahead to the next stage and keep that part right there. Okay, so let's go in and show all of our parts that we created. Okay, and now we want to um, combine all these parts into one solid model. Um, so we'll go up to Boolean. We're going to use merge operation um, for this, and we can either select each of these individually or box select. And click OK. 
So now we have one solid body, um, and I'm going to leave the video here and let you continue, um, if you'd like, to go ahead and make a few of the more of the cutouts. Um, I'd suggest maybe using the revolution tool, uh, maybe using more primitive bodies um, to get this inner diameter. Um, there's also some holes that you can create down here at the bottom, um, so on and so forth. So if you'd like to continue, please feel free. And um, thank you again for joining us.